it just worked out perfectly. I mean, I, I look back at my career and as we get deeper into conversation about it, I don't really regret anything. I thought that was the right age for me to start. I was more focused on, okay, this is a turning point in my life. This is really what I want to do. I started pursuing like what my passion I re learned was, was weightlifting. I mean, I, I love to be in the gym and I always tell everyone it wasn't about the body. It was about the mind at first. And then it turned into when I saw the, the progression of the body, that's really what kept me motivated to continue. And I saw a huge progression. When did you learn about anabolic steroids? Because that is a part of bodybuilding. And so with you seeing these bodybuilders and like even Sylvester Stallone, was there a point where you kind of learned about it and you were like, wait, what? Or did you kind of know about it progressively as you were diving into it? I knew about it, you know, and it was more apparent when I showed up at the T Nationals, I could see guys in better condition and like, you know, guys that have more mature muscle at 17, 18, 19. And that's when I realized, wow, this is, you know, this is something that if I'm going to continue to do, I, I'm going to have to dabble in something like that. And uh, I didn't know much about like the deep ins and outs of training for a contest and what you needed to do. But I knew about testosterone. I mean, of course, I watched the Rocky movies at 12 and saw <laughs> yeah. Ivan Drago taking his <laughs> testosterone shot. What a cheater. Stallone would never do that. Yeah. The United yeah, States right. would never act that way. So I thought, <laughs> shit, you know, that's that's the way, you know. But, of course, at 12, you think you're influenced. The movie means, okay, he's he lost and steroids aren't the answer, right? <laughs> right. So. Son, of a, son of a bitch. Yeah. Um, as you got into it further um, or, or just even, like, um, seeing more modern-day bodybuilding and seeing the size that people have uh, grown to, it seems like there's uh, – people are confused people are a lot of people think it's just drugs and a lot of people think uh the guy that gets the first place trophy just took a lot more shit than everybody else what are some of your thoughts on that i think it's bullshit because when i started training you know i worked with i mentioned you know when i started about six months in i met chris Aceto, who trained me for almost my whole career who was a great nutritionist uh he uh he actually graduated first in his class exercise and nutrition and at Springfield College, which a lot of people don't know. And he taught me a lot about the nutrition aspect. And the funny thing is that we rarely talked about drugs. Uh, and because that really wasn't one of those things. I mean, as a teenager, you, you really, you know, I had the physique and I was progressing super fast and everything was very, very basic. And that's the way I kind of believed. And I saw success right away from that. So I wasn't eyeing, okay, well, to move forward, I need to do a ton of drugs or anything like that shit. I mean, it was kind of like voodoo, right? No one talked about it. And we didn't have the internet, so you couldn't mm -hmm. read about, like, cycles and that kind of stuff. The magazines definitely didn't talk about it. Um, every guy was natural in the magazines. <laughs> and, uh, you know, every guy was just like, you know, took the supplements, the weeder, you know, the chewable right. wrench chain aminos or whatever they were selling at the time. So for me, you know, to see what's happened now and see what, people's perception is of what everyone takes including myself when i was winning mr olympia titles it's just i mentioned you guys earlier you know when you when you're a mr olympia contender like this there's, there's been 13 right i was number 11 listen we we're destined for greatness you know drug take the drugs in or out drugs aren't going to make that person because you have to have the structure you have to have the mindset you have to have the muscle capability to manage uh, that much size and that much condition on stage, balance, all that symmetry, those things you talk about. And I just think that society is becoming so jaded with, with how they perceive like what it takes to be at the top and they want shortcuts. And we talk about that, you know, you touched on an important thing was, was a work, work ethic. And a lot of today's society lacks that because it's the upbringing that brings that, you know, that blue collar shit that you don't hear about anymore. Like, you know, me sitting there telling you I prayed every day to get through my work days. <laughs> yeah. Like that shit's like, that's what makes a person. And I never was the most genetically gifted guy on that Olympia stage, but I trained my ass off and I, uh, I knew how to diet and I, I was always on track with everything. I mean, I, everything was structured. I lived in a fucking box in order to be the best, meaning I had no outside. People would call me with their problems, I'd hang up on them. Like the phones were, were off, don't bother me with negative shit. And I just went at it. And I think now the bodies, yes, there's some <clears throat> drug-induced bodies 
I think it's got out of control. I mean, you talk about all these peptides and all the bullshit now that goes into it. These people come up and ask me questions. I mean, I had, I was in Houston this past weekend and they're like, Hey, what do you think about this? I don't even know these fucking terms anymore. These people. Right. Use. I mean, I have no idea. I know about testosterone. I know about a few cutting agents and whatever, but it's not, uh, it's not something I'm even, uh, educated on. So I can't even speak on it. And people look at me like, Oh, he's full of shit, <laughs> but it's a different era now. <clears throat> Right. And I think that the internet's fucked everything up. And I think that the magazines, you know, they gave a certain amount of information the right way. And once it became live on the net and you got these kamikaze type people, I think it kind of threw a wrench in a lot of things and influenced a lot of these young kids. What is it about some of the stuff with the internet that, that you don't like? There's a lot of positives to it, obviously, too. But what are some things that you don't like about the internet? Uh, it gives everyone a voice that don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. really that's right. opinions, right? I can post a picture on Instagram and say, hey, you know, what do you think, uh, what do you think my best body part is or whatever? And everyone's going to go from calves all the way to the, you know, neck, you know, and they're going to say, oh, you're back and this and that. And then they're going to say, well, Ronnie Coleman had a better back. That's not the question I asked, right? <laughs> it was about what do you, which body part was my best. Yeah. Fuck you, Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I think he's the greatest ever, but, you know we did our battles and right. you know, people have their opinions. Like judges had theirs. I didn't necessarily agree with the judging. I think a lot of it was off, but, uh, I have a lot in my favor too. So it's not like I'm going to sit there and, and rag on the judging, but listen, man, the fans are, the fans are fickle like that. They just, they have their favorites and you know, you're, you're hot for a while. And then the, once you win a few, they hate you. Right. But fortunately for me, I've carried a huge fan base of all ages, uh, I still travel tremendously and I'm still respected in this business to a lot of people. And, uh, that's why I continue to do what I do. And that's what drives me today. And what did it take for you to be the best? You know, for each person, it's different. Some people, some people meditate and do weird shit. Right. And, and some people will just, uh, you mentioned to me like that you had coaches, uh, that worked on flexibility. You got a lot of soft tissue work. It sounds to me like that you took this as a job, uh, almost <laughs> what's weird about it is it sounds like you put yourself in the same prison that you were in when you were a kid and you, you went to work that way. I think I tortured myself to be honest. I, I, uh, the society that maybe liked some of that. I lived a very structured lifestyle and I don't know how it is in the power powerlifting world, but like we are kind of, uh, there's a lot of superstition, right. Of like, getting off trends so like getting off trend like mm -hmm. yeah trends <laughs> <laughs> gotta get off that trend yeah. cough mm -hmm. so <clears throat> with me like i was contracted right most of my career i mean joe weeder signed me to contract when i was 23 and i was paid to work out which was amazing to me so i was getting a check no matter what but I didn't take advantage of that, which I think a lot of guys do. So my life was structured where I'd still get up at six or seven in the morning and I would train whatever twice a day. I'd be in bed at nine or 10 o'clock and then the day would start the next day. So I treated it, uh, with a, with a solid routine. You know, I followed the diet regimens, like I said, and you know, everything was on point. Uh, but I think the dedication and the commitment to what I do, I mean, that's really what makes the athlete, you know, I, I, like I said, I wasn't genetically gifted in, in certain areas, but I made up for it with the hard work. And that comes from the background, obviously the upbringing, but I was also stubborn as hell. Right. I mean, I, I just, I was told I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. I was told I wouldn't be a good pro. I was told I'd never turn pro, never win the Olympia, never win it more than once. After I lost it, they said, then I'd come back and win it again. So I think a lot of that's a little ego too. I mean, you have to have a little ego to be able to do what I do and be great at it. Uh, but I think everyone in their own right is destined for greatness. It just depends on what platform or what level they're willing to put out. And, you know, for me, it was, it was the fitness bodybuilding thing that allowed me to showcase my best talents. You need to have an ego, um, especially to get up in front of people like that and pose in a little pair of underwear. Right? I mean, <laughs> honestly, dude, in the beginning, I thought it was so fucking weird. You know, like my, my mom is like... <laughs> You know, she didn't get it. Like we put on that dye and, you know, shaving the body like right. you're going to you're going to do here in a couple months. <laughs> it's so strange. And, you know, you, you you're like orange. Right. And you get up on stage and under the lights and you hit these poses and, you know, you have to learn how to 
you know, sh show your strong points, but hide your weaknesses. And everyone has weaknesses, you know. And, and also be somewhat entertaining. I mean, it's not just flexing, right? It's I mean, not. You've got to be comfortable, which it's not. I mean, being if up, you don't, if you don't look comfortable, they're going to recognize that. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, you know, for me, like that wasn't the fun part about what I did. The fucking, the best part was training in the gym. Like I love to train.